While Gorbachev was working his reforms at home, he knew he'd have to strike up a new relationship with the West. It viewed the USSR with deep suspicion. While they preach the supremacy of the state, declare its omnipotence over individual man and predict its eventual domination of all peoples on the earth. They are the focus of evil in the modern world. Ronald Reagan's reference to the USSR as an evil empire was a low point in superpower relations. Before Gorbachev, the Soviet Union and America had faced each other down in a nuclear arms race that the USSR could no longer afford. Gorbachev would have to reduce his military spending and call a halt to the arms race if he wanted to solve the crisis in his civilian economy. Gorbachev knew he'd have to forge a new relationship with the United States to replace the nuclear standoff that had existed since the end of the Second World War. Both knew that neither would survive an all-out nuclear war, yet they continued to build their arsenals. Gorbachev became more popular abroad than he was at home. But he knew he had to win the trust of Western leaders if his proposals on the arms race were to be taken seriously. Gorbachev and Reagan met for the first time in Geneva in 1985. They got on well together as their teams worked to thrash out an agreement on arms control. But Gorbachev wanted more. He wanted to reduce the number of nuclear weapons held by each side. This was a new approach from a new style of Soviet leader. Nothing important came out of Geneva, but the two men agreed to meet again. The next meeting took place in the Icelandic capital Reykjavik in the winter of 1986. There were high hopes of a breakthrough. Again, the Soviets talked about arms reduction and suggested completely removing shorter range missiles from Europe. The session went well until Gorbachev mentioned the new technology that might give the United States the advantage in nuclear conflict. It was called SDI, the Strategic Defense Initiative, otherwise known as Star Wars. I was at Reykjavik and I remember that originally we thought it was a failure because they almost agreed, believe it or not, they almost agreed on nuclear disarmament. Gorbachev had his plan, or idea maybe, and Reagan to our big surprise, agreed. Let's get rid of these nuclear weapons. These are awful. But then Gorbachev said what well, this strategic defense initiative, this uh, stock, was... Uh, he didn't understand, even though I tried to talk to him about this, that it's pipe dream. It's impossible, technically. The idea behind SDI, or Star Wars, was that America would place above the Earth a series of laser weapons that could knock out any nuclear threat from the Soviet Union. This would mean the United States would have a definite advantage in the event of a nuclear war. Gorbachev saw Star Wars as a threat to world stability. He wanted all experimental work on the project stopped. When the Americans saw how nervous Gorbachev was about SDI, they urged Reagan to use it as a lever to win greater concessions from the Soviets in other military areas. The negotiators worked long into the night. The Americans knew SDI was a pipe dream, but they still used it to put pressure on the Soviets. Reagan and Gorbachev left Reykjavik with no agreement on arms reduction. They made some progress, but Gorbachev felt let down. He'd pinned his authority at home on reforming the weakened Soviet economy. An arms agreement would have helped strengthen it. <laughs> 